Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with a review of Beach Blanket Bad Guys, the summer special from DC Comics. Well, it's an anthology book, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I always say they are a mixed bag. You know, you got your great stories, you got your good stories, you got your bad stories. And at the end of the, the reviews, because I'm going to go through each one of them individually and talk about them, I'll have an overall look at the book. So you, you'll get an idea not only of every story, but of the way every story kind of is it a cohesive book is it something that you can read and or is it going to like be somewhere where like you're just taken out of the story because of this one or taken out of the book because of this story or that story so you'll have that kind of uh overview as well as a look at every individual story and it is 10 of them <laughs> so there was a time when i'm reading i'm going okay wait is that the last one no which, which one's the last one i had to remember okay the crime syndicate the crime syndicate's the last one so when you get to the crime syndicate you know that'll be the last review but up first you have the worst finest which is the joker and bizarro and i gotta say first of all the art is incredible on this one they're just incredible art on this and you have the joker dressed like Batman. So at first I thought it was going to be sort of a uh, uh, the, the Batman who laughs kind of thing, but it wasn't. It was just the Joker wanted to meet up with Bizarro and talk about how he's his friend. Of course, being friends in Bizarro world, that means you fight. So the two of them really go at it, and it's thoroughly entertaining, <laughs> especially when you consider that Bizarro could crush the Joker, and he just found that to be scary and fun the whole nine yards. So you really do get good represent representation of the two characters, and in the end you get just what I think was a thoroughly enjoyable story and a great start to this particular anthology book. Next up, we have Lex Luthor in Help. There's one scene that gets me a little bit out of the story, and that is where his car breaks down. It's a new technology, and so he calls up his company and fires the entire department. No, that's not how a businessman would do. It would just be back to the drawing board. Uh, so this one's about a story. He uh, He's on the side of the road. A guy comes up to help. He's got a Superman tattoo. So Lex Luthor is like, why him? And then he tells him, because Superman, it doesn't matter of, uh, in any human achievement. And the guy's like, hey, I know exactly how you feel because he felt the same way. He was failing when he saw Superman. He thought, well, what can he do with a Superman in the world? And then one time he's on his balcony and uh, Superman comes in, just starts talking to him. And telling him how Superman feels the weight of the world and all sorts of troubles. And all you can do is, you know, press on and help. Help as much as you can. And that inspired the man. And, of course, this just ticks off Lex Luthor. It's a decent story. It's a good story. And it, it's, it kind of carries on what the, the entire book is about. And that's basically humanizing the villains. In this case, though, Lex Luthor did not get humanized. And one of my, if not the favorite book or story in the book is Close Shave starring Mr. Freeze who is testing out a giant robot that apparently he doesn't expect anybody to notice and he's walking around Gotham you would think Batman would show up really quick and he discovers that there's uh, an ice cream lady somebody selling shaved ice and their mascot is him and so he brings him up inside the giant robot to chastise and maybe even kill her and they just talk that's it. They just It's a conversation. Like I said, this book is all about uh, showing the human side of these villains. It, it really is making us relate to them as people rather than as the bad guys. And uh, so don't expect a whole bunch of action-packed except for that Joker story. But there is some action in every story. This one is one of my favorite, though. I thought it was handled very well, and I liked Mr. Freeze in it quite a bit. While I still think False Idols starring Cheetah is good, I do think it's the weakest of the book. I might change my mind as I'm going through the stories again, but this one is just, you know, this girl comes up, she's made a sacrifice to Cheetah, she wants some of the Cheetah power. Because she heard that's how it works. And um, it's basically, we just get this girl's story, and then... Uh, Wonder Woman comes up, Cheetah fights her, and we find out, a lot of uh, motives for Cheetah. Overall, meh, it's all right. You know, it, it, like I said, it's it's not bad. 
It's just when compared to the rest of the book, I do think the cheetah is the weakest of the stories. All right, Black Manda, he's so hot right now. And uh, this is, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, the it kind of drags a little bit. This is told from the perspective of somebody on an excavation team with Black Manta. And she's saying, wow, I know he's a bad guy, but I don't see this at all. I just see him as part of the team, and he's a good guy. And sure, he gives Atlantis a tr trouble, but he's helping us a lot. And I, I just don't understand why they think he's a bad guy. And so it goes. And it gets a little bit hairy, of course, when he begins to show bad guy colors and the young lady is questioning whether or not she still wants to retain a relationship with him. Uh, yeah, once again, it's okay, but I don't particularly think this is as strong as the stories that came before it. Uh, stronger than the cheetah, but I'm talking about the ones uh, other than that. No redemption in this one, get kids. Giganta Strong. She goes back to her hometown, and they're having the high school carnival, and she's even like, you're still doing this? This is the way you think you're going to get to kids? And nobody remembers her. And we get a little of her backstory, and we realize why nobody remembers her. She's not exactly a memorable person except for this one guy who kept picking on her. And uh, apparently she was a little bit of a social pariah because of her condition. And turns out that this guy's still there, and he, me, she sees his son, and his son's a bully just like he was, and decides, well, hey, you know, boys will be boys, bullies will be bullies, get over it. People always get over it, which, of course, uh, makes her go off and, well, right here she's stepping on the school. You know, spoilers, but like I said, it's not a redemption story, it's a revenge story. And she does get revenge and kind of inspires a young lady to do the same. Okay, I like this story a lot. Cruel Summer with uh, Flash and Gorilla Grodd. So it's got... Uh, Flash runs out and he says, instead of just fighting you, I wanted to talk to you. And he says that he learned Grodd's origin. And the whole thing is, is that Grodd's mother got killed. So Flash is like, we're the same, we're the same. And... Grodd turns around and he looks at him and then he proceeds to try to kill him. I'm like, oh yes, I love that. Try to reach him and he, you get bitch slapped for it. I, I totally enjoyed this particular story for that. I was thinking, oh man, if they have any kind of connection here, it's going to be ho hokey. Don't be hokey. Don't be hokey. And it wasn't. So got to say, you know, The Flash is one of my favorite stories in the book as well. And I did like the scenes with him and his mother trying to survive a drought deathstroke in dog days of summer i got i gotta admit i like this one but this is from the mind of somebody who's pretty sick i i like this this was a villain story through and through a little girl tries to hire deathstroke as uh as an assassin to assassinate her stepfather because he hits her and at first he doesn't, but then he views the stepfather and then says, okay, well, and, uh, well, you know, I'm not going to tell you what happens in this one. Cause if you pick it up, you really deserve to see it basically untouched. You really do. This is one of those don't go in with spoiler stories. Cause it really is from the mind of a sicko in a good way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not blaming. I'm not putting any kind of any shame on it. It, it, it's a really strong story. It is. It's just got some twisted ending to it. So there you go. Uh, Perfect Gentleman. We've seen this before. We've seen this in the uh, in the animated series. It stars the Penguin. It's him as a boy. It's a flashback story. And we see him in love with the rich debutante. He wants to be there. Of course, it's his own... Uh, it's his own arrogance. It's his own conceit that makes it so he can't be uh be with somebody like her or even talk to her uh because he's just you know on one hand he's arrogant and conceited but on the other hand he lacks the confidence to actually speak to people because of his appearance so yeah like i said it's once again no it's not bad but it just isn't as strong as the others probably my second least favorite and mainly because it treads no new ground here 
And last but certainly not least is the story with the crime syndicate, which I'm going to say right now, I want to see the continuation of. This is such a great story. The best, I haven't said I wanted to see the continuation of any of the others. So I would say, yeah, but then again, not all the others set up. But this one really does set up to for a follow through. There's there's a follow through here. And I think I would like to see it. I love this group. This is my favorite of all the Justice League villains. And I just, man, I, I, I want to watch. I, I want to read more. Every time. In the uh, Grant Morrison run, I know it wasn't his story at that point, but the, the Crime Syndicate was my favorite story as well. I know a lot of people say Tower of Babel, but this was. And this is just an amazing story. Um, I, I can't talk about it. Not without spoiling it, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to say if you pick up the book, you're going to like this one. Anyway, that's my opinion. What do you think? Uh, did you buy Beach Blanket Bad Guys? Are you even planning on it? Did you even know it existed? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, you know the drill. Click like, share to get word about the channel out. And, of course, if you haven't done it already, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Good things happen around these parts. Hate for you to miss it. Also, this is the way I'm trying to make a living, so if you don't mind helping the channel out, go on over to Patreon. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep making videos for you. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.